Have you ever walked outside your home in the middle of summer when it hasn't rained for months and seen water gushing down the street through the gutters and wondered, is there a fire hydrant open? My late, did my neighbor leave the sprinkler on again? Or maybe even, could I capture that water and use it in my own garden? That is the water at your doorstep, and that is the water that we at Utah Rivers Council think is one of the biggest opportunities for the Salt Lake County. My name is John Carter. I'm the campaign director. Joining me today is Nick Hallberg, our research and pol policy analyst, and Matt Stevens, our grassroots organizer. To understand the water at our doorstep, though, we must first understand the water that's not at our doorstep. Currently proposed is Bear River Development. This is the largest water project currently in the American West being proposed. And as you can see on the image on the right, it consists of a series of dams capable of storing up to 300,000 acre feet of water in reservoirs, and then a 90 mile long pipeline to transport that water down to uh, the counties along the Wasatch Front. And that pipeline would divert 220,000 acre feet of water, potentially 400,000 acre feet of water, if Idaho decides to join in out of the Bear River and out of the Great Salt Lake, primarily for the lawns and gardens of the Wasatch Front. This project is expected to cost $2.9 billion, likely more if it takes time to build it, and this would account for $13,180 per acre foot of water, up to $20,000 per acre foot of water, making it one of the most expensive sources of water. But it's not just about the price. This project would have some other devastating impact. Inundate thousands of acres of farmlands where the reservoirs are built. With the image on the left, you can see it would lower Great Salt Lake water levels so much that it would expose thousands of acres of lake bed surface. And it would impact millions of migratory birds who use the lake as a refuge during their migration from the southern tip of South America to the northern tip of North America. But one of the most devastating impacts would be to the air quality of the millions of residents along the Wasatch Front. This is a video from 2016 taken up on the East Bench from the University of Utah. And you can see here the upper troposphere it remains a sunny day, but as the winds pick up, they pick up that exposed lake bed surface and bring all those minerals and chemicals into the air that we are breathing here along the Wasatch Front, one of those being arsenic. And you can imagine how damaging that would be to us. But now that I've brought you down just a little bit, let's talk about a solution. Utah may be in drought, but a lot of water is going unused in the irrigation canals in Salt Lake County. That used to be irrigation water, and even though most farms are now gone, that water is still there, and now it's going to waste. Tune in to Rod Decker is on that story today. Rod, is there any way this water can be redirected? Well, maybe. It's, it's not being used, some of it, but it's all owned, so you'd, you'd have to buy it. Next, you'd have to figure out a way to get it before it got into Utah Lake and into the canals and got all polluted. Salt Lake County has a lot of old irrigation water that used to grow wheat and alfalfa. But now, there are stores and parking lots. All of this water is still owned, but a lot of it isn't used anymore. This canal runs near Southtown Mall. The water comes from Utah Lake. The lawns by the canal use sprinklers with municipal water. So let's take a step back and see how we got here and why these projects like Bear River Development and the one we're proposing today are, are made. And, you know, Salt Lake County has had a history of growth. In 1900, there were 77,000 residents in the county. By the 90s, 725,000 residents. And today, we have 1.169 million people living in Salt Lake County. Now, you can see what's happening today is, you know, there used to be all these farms, just like this one in front of Mount Olympus, where Mill Creek is today. And currently, there's about 30 acres of farmland converted every day changing this landscape into urban landscape and that's being done to accommodate for an expected increase of 600,000 residents by the year 2065. And you know it's important to have an adequate water supply but what's being forgotten today is the many canals that are still running through Salt Lake County. And you know they've been a part of the county for over a hundred years. In 1875 the first major canal was built 
can see here this is the Jordan and Salt Lake Canal. This is at 11th east and 12th south, looking south. And you know what this allowed was for the city and local farmers to enter into exchange contracts. The farmers at the time were using water out of Mill Creek, Big Cottonwood, and Little Cottonwood Canyons. And the city built the canal and decided to exchange that water so the city could use the high quality drinking water out of the canyons and the farmers could use the canal water to irrigate their, their crops. And that gave the city an additional 65,000 acre feet of water annually for the residents. And today, you know, the Jordan and Salt Lake City Canal are still a cornerstone of the city's growth and prosperity. On the right, you can see a monument that was erected for these canals that's actually still sitting above where the canals run under the street at 1250 East and 21st South. And, you know, I'm going to let Nick Hallberg uh, talk to you a little bit more about what's happening with our canals today. Excellent. So just like John was talking about, uh, the Salt Lake Valley used to be covered in farm fields, alfalfa, wheat, uh, but now a lot of our irrigation water is not anymore going onto these fields. It's going into parking lots. It's flowing through canals. In fact, this is the fate of much of our irrigation water in the Salt Lake Valley today. As you can see, a lot of it is flowing down the sides of streets. Uh, this, you can see a fire hydrant up there in the distance. This is not actually a leak from the fire hydrant. This is not uh, a spillover from a sewage. This is actual irrigation water that was diverted from streams for this use. People ride by it all the time in Salt Lake City and don't notice it. And this comes from the hundreds of miles of uh, canals that have more or less sort of gone into uh, disuse across the Salt Lake Valley. Now, while this... Uh, prevents some problems, it also presents a huge amount of opportunity. Uh, but one of the biggest problems from these is that online canals lose a lot of water. So just like you saw there, the water around the Salt Lake City was just flowing in the street. A lot of it flows through these dirt trenches where it's sucked into the ground. It's lost to uh, evaporation from the sun. In fact, online canals, like what over 80% of the canals in the Salt Lake County are, lose about 30 to 50% of their water to seepage and evaporation. You can see two examples on the right here of uh, canals that got destroyed. The first is from the Central Arizona Project, even just south of us. Uh, uh, it, this canal was uh, structurally deficit because of seepage damage and eventually blew. Um, the good news is that simply improving our canals, lining canals, can reduce the loss 86%. We can recover up to 86% of our unused water that's already been diverted, that's right at our doorstep just by simply lining canals, which is a fairly cheap and easy procedure. <laughs> Additionally, piping canals, where we enclose all the, the canal in a pipe, can save us even more water. We can potentially eliminate all of our water loss, the water that's just literally disappearing into the ground, into the sky, just by simply putting it in a pipe. Uh, now, why is this a good opportunity for Salt Lake County? Well, it's because there's a ton of water for us to take advantage of. If we were to line all of the canals in Salt Lake County, this is just some back of the napkin math, we could save potentially up to 43,000 acre feet. Uh, the numbers that we use to calculate this are fairly old. There haven't been many recent studies done on this topic, unfortunately. Uh, but again, there's a potential for 43,000 acre feet of unused water that we could save and convert to beneficial use just by simply lining our canals with concrete and rubber. If we pipe our canals, we could save even more, up to 50,000 acre feet. And again, these numbers are a little rough, but these savings are realistic. Over here on the left, you can see a picture from Coachella, California. This is a canal that uh, the San Diego Water Authority lined. They were able to save 26,000 acre feet just by lining this one canal. That saved water went out and supported new residents, new growth. They were able to use that as new water sales, so they actually generated revenue from lining this canal. Over here on the right, this is Barker Ranch in Washington. Uh, this canal, a smaller section of this canal, was piped. This was an old irrigation canal that was taking water from the Yakima River. They piped this canal uh, for a cost of about five and a half million dollars, and they saved themselves just over 6,400 acre feet of water. A lot of that water the state took on this project, and a lot of that water was allowed to go back into the river and was able to help fish populations and the uh, riparian ecosystem there. 
So you can see improving our canals, either lining or piping, there's a huge amount of water, 50,000 acre feet that we can take advantage of. That's enough water to support either 150,000 new households, which is the equivalent of 400,000 new residents in Salt Lake County, or even go back to help some of our threatened ecosystems like the Great Salt Lake that John was just talking about. So this really is a massive untapped source of water for us that is literally, just like you saw in the videos, flowing at the end of our gutters, just flowing just feet outside our door. Uh, now, this is really, really beneficial because canal improvement projects on average are much cheaper than new diversion projects. Uh, on the right, we're going to show Bear River development costs just as sort of a standing point. That's the... That's the big project. That's the alternative to canal improvement. Uh, let's see here on the left. Canal improvement projects. There is two just recently conducted in northern Utah. These numbers are from the Utah Board of Water Resources. Uh, two projects conducted in northern Utah cost $1.7 and $2.8 million. The Bear River Development, on the other hand, just like John said, would cost $2.9 billion. Billion with a B. Uh, these canal improvement projects on the left, the first one, the $1.7 million project, saved just about 2,700 acre feet of water. The other one saved 2,300 acre feet. The Bear River Development would deliver much more water, 220,000 acre feet. Uh, but when you look at the ratios, it's not even close. The canal improvement projects delivered an, a, a new acre foot of water to their customers at a cost of $680 to $1,200 per acre foot. Bear River Development, on the other hand, would cost, like John said, $13,000 per acre foot. Assuming construction costs don't continue to increase, assuming the project's on time, like John said, this could go, you know, up to $20,000 acre foot or more. So really, taking advantage of the water that is flowing through our gutters, that is seeping into the ground, disappearing in our city, uh, is, is much cheaper than diverting new water from a river that might be 90 miles away. Uh, but even in addition to that, it makes a lot of fiscal sense. But in addition to that, uh, there's a number of other reasons why we should pursue these projects. Uh, and to talk about that, I'm going to give it to Matt Stevens, our grassroots organizer. So Nick did a really excellent job synthesizing a lot of the inefficiencies in terms of water loss with the canals. But unlined canals also pose a pretty serious problem in terms of, of infrastructure and potential flooding within our communities. So you can picture here, this is the South Jordan Canal, and that is, again, an unlined canal, and you can see it's sort of flowing through a very residential area. And while it is losing a ton of water, it's also setting up this lake potential for some pretty serious flooding that we've seen occur throughout the Salt Lake Valley. So here we are, about 30 feet below that same exact canal. Um, you're looking up, at the banks of the canal, the trees are growing on the side of that bank. The only reason why they can grow there is because water is seeping out. And you can see that water right there sort of puddling on the ground. And then you pan over and there's literally a pond of water that's just sort of, of sitting in this residential area. And all of this ponded water is a direct result of flooding from this canal. And so when you remember, Nick says there's over 250 miles of these canals in the Salt Lake Valley. And this is not an isolated problem. You see this, this sort of flooding potentially all over the place. And so this represents a pretty major problem for residential areas, for people's houses, their basements, right? just like municipal infra infrastructure generally. And it represents a problem in and of itself beyond just the water loss that should be addressed by our municipal governments and um, they should take the time to sort of figure this out and sort of sort through this problem. But I think when you look at these two potential problems, the water loss and the infrastructure integrity, it seems a little bit overwhelming, but we have a really awesome opportunity to turn this into something that's very beneficial for our residents of the Salt Lake Valley. The first really critical opportunity is that we can improve the water quality of the Salt Lake Valley pretty significantly. By piping these canals, we essentially are isolating them from the outside world. And that's important because these canals sort of sit at the bottom of the Salt Lake Valley and they're collecting all of the runoff. So we're talking salt from snowy streets, we're talking 
rubber from car tires, we're talking trash, we're talking urban runoff. And all of that amounts to some pretty serious degradation of the water quality within those canal systems. And all of that water eventually winds up in either Utah Lake or the Great Salt Lake, which has some pretty significant impacts on those aquatic ecosystems. So simply by isolating those canals and piping them, we sort of remove that the potential water quality problems that we face um, and see in a lot of the canal systems across the Salt Lake Valley today. The next opportunity is sort of what John touched on is that we have this opportunity to save water at our doorstep. And when we pipe canals, essentially we allow them to be tapped into our secondary water source and becomes a very inexpensive source of water. And that's because when canals are piped, they're pressurized. And so when the water is pressurized, they can tap into those secondary systems that people use to water their, their lawns or their fields or just generally use for outdoor water. And you can see here on the right, this is taken just yesterday, there's literally pages of people selling their water rights on KSL. There's an abundance of water out here in the Salt Lake Valley that people are literally trying to get rid of and to try and capitalize on. And it makes sense to really utilize this inexpensive source of water because it has the potential to help us avoid spending billions of dollars on Bear River development and the impacts to farmers that that, that has and the impacts to taxpayers that, that has and the impacts to our ecological health of the Great Salt Lake that that has. And so this is a really incredible opportunity to sort of turn this problem of water loss into something that is incredibly beneficial to the overall economic and ecological health of the Salt Lake Valley. So what does the, the future of these potential canals look like? We think that if you pipe canals, there's a really bright future, especially because you're turning a potential infrastructure problem into something that can be really beneficial for residents. So when you bury a canal in a pipe, it opens up this space that can be transformed into really beautiful urban greenways. Um, this is a, you have pictures down there below of the Murdoch Canal in Orem, and that was a canal that was buried, it was piped, and it was turned into a trail that residents now use to walk and ride their bikes and ride horses and really just get out and engage in their communities in a really usable and beneficial space for that community. There's also a really powerful opportunity for partnerships. Um, we can see like the canal companies, city governments, non-government organizations really coming together to envision a better future for our canals and for our communities and really to transition this problem that's sort of been languishing within plain sight for quite a long time into something that's really beneficial for our communities and really an opportunity to sort of foster that community and that growth that we want to see in the future. And then of course, we have the potential to really improve just the overall like water quality of the Salt Lake Valley. We'd avoid the need for potential Bear River development, which would have pretty cataclysmic impacts to our air quality and to the health of the Great Salt Lake. We'd improve our water quality and we'd be using the least cost water available to us in order to glean all these benefits for our communities. So we really think that this is something that has a lot of potential and a lot of room to grow and to sort of turn this, this problem into something that's really beneficial to our communities. And we think that this is something that is worth studying and worth taking the time to sort of invest and to do more, do more research on. Um, and that concludes our, resen our presentation today. Um, we are more than happy to answer any questions that you all have about this. We'll be here all week. Um, and yeah, we're, we're really here to be a resource for you all. So if you have any interest in terms of um, getting to know more about how we can sort of pipe these canals or, or line these canals or how we can make the most beneficial use of the water that we have available, please feel free to either call us or email us and we'd be super happy to talk with you further about this project. Um, and just help sort of get this ball moving because we have this really incredible opportunity to 
sort of transform the way that these canal systems operate within the Salt Lake Valley. And we think that there should we should reach out and, and take that. And we, we would be more than happy to help you out with that. And if you have any questions about our citations, those are in our PowerPoint as well. So feel free to check that out. But thank you so much for your time and your attention and reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much.